Hello and welcome to Electromagnetics 1. Dr. Trample here. This is lecture number 15. Today we're going to be talking about magnetic forces. Well, if you will recall, we already talked a little bit about how uh, the electric field uh, exerts a force on a charged particle. And that force is simply equal to um, the charge Q times the electric field. Well, it turns out that um, the magnetic field also uh, exerts a force on charged particles in motion. And uh, that force is given by Q times the velocity of the particle crossed with the magnetic flux density B. So the, the, total, the total force uh, that a charged particle fields, feels is given by the Lorentz force equation here. So we can say force is by Newton's second law equal to the mass times the first derivative with respect to time of the velocity of the particle u. So force is equal to mass times acceleration here. And that force has a component due to the electric field, QE, and a component due to the magnetic field, um, Q uh, times U, the velocity, crossed with B here, magnetic flux density, which is essentially the, the magnetic field. So a couple of things to notice here, first off, is that uh, the force uh, exerted by the electric field on a charged particle is in the same direction as the electric field. Uh, however, the force exerted on a moving uh, charged particle here, u, uh, with, with velocity u, uh, is not in the same direction as the magnetic field because of this cross product here. So uh, the force is uh, 90 degrees to both the velocity and the magnetic field. Well, suppose we'd like to find the force DF, the differential force, on a small element of current I dl. Okay? Um, we know that that little current element is going to feel a force because the due to the magnetic field. Um, because the uh, charges are, are in motion, they're moving, they, they're not stationary. So they're going to feel a force due to the uh, magnetic field or the magnetic flux density B equivalently. All right. Well, first of all, let's remember that for a convection current, we have this expression here, J, uh, the electric current density is equal to uh, the charge density rho sub v times this velocity vector. Let's further recall the relationship between current elements. So um, it turns out that I times dl, in other words, a, a line current element, um, is the same as a uh, surface current, k, times a differential uh, unit of area ds and a volume current j times a little differential uh, volume dv. Each of these uh, each of these little uh, current elements here have units amps times meters. Okay, now we're going to use this first equation here. We're going to substitute in for j in this expression, so we can say that IDL is equal to JDV, which is equal to uh, the charge density rho sub V times U times a little differential volume DV, okay? Which is also equal to um, this, this uh, uh, charge density times a little differential volume gets you a little differential unit of charge DQ, if you think about the units. This has units coulombs per meter cubed. This has units meter cubed. So when you multiply them, you just get coulombs. So this times this gets you a little differential charge times a velocity u. Okay. 
this is useful to us. This is too useful to us because remember, um, we talked about the component of the Lorentz force that's due to the magnetic field can be written in this way. The charge times the velocity crossed with the uh, magnetic flux density. Well, um, what, what that implies then is uh, if we just have a differential charge here, it's going to produce a differential force. So simply applying differentials here and here, we have dq times u cross b is equal to df. That's a little differential force. But from this relationship down here, we found out that dq times u is equal to i dl. So we can make that substitution right here. So it turns out that um, a little differential current element, i dl, feels a differential force that is equal to I dl cross b, like that. So we've answered this question, what is the differential force felt by a differential current element I dl in the presence of a magnetic field? Right here, this expression tells you the answer to that question. Well, um, what happens if instead of a little differential uh, current element, you have some current distribution, be it a line current, a surface current, or a volume current. How do we figure out how much force each of those distributions feels? Well, if the current I is through a closed path L or through a circuit, flowing through a circuit, the force on that circuit is given by this equation. You just simply integrate that little differential uh, a current element all the way around the closed path L. Similarly, if you have a surface current, uh, the force felt by that um, surface current is given by K dS cross B here integrated over the surface. And uh, the force felt by a volume current is given by J dV cross B integrated over a volume, just like so. These are three uh, useful expressions if you need to uh, find the forces on uh, current elements, uh, linear current elements, line currents, surface currents, and, and volume currents. Well, let's, let's look at an example here. Let's uh, determine the force felt by a semicircular conductor here, basically just a wire that's been bent into a semicircle in the presence of a magnetic field, all right, here denoted by B, how much force does this current, uh, does this wire essentially, does this semicircular conductor feel in due to uh, the magnetic field? We're going to assume that the wire is carrying a current capital I. We're going to break the, the problem up into two pieces. The first piece is we're going to figure out what is the force felt on the straight section of wire right here. And this uh, straight section of wire has length uh, 2r. Well, we're going to apply this equation right here, the force on a closed loop. Um, and the first, the first section here is, if you'll notice, again, like so many of the problems in this course, you have to figure out um, expressions for each of these terms in the more general exp in the more general um, expression. So, what is dL in our case? Well, it's just a different, a little differential length here along the x-axis. So that's dx in the x-hat direction. That's dL, and we've been told that b has the form b not in the y-hat direction, just like that. So we take dx x hat cross b not y hat, and uh, that gets us um, dx b not in the z hat direction. And then we perform the integration from x going from minus r to positive r, and we get a factor of 2r that, that pops out. So the force on the straight current element due to this magnetic field is equal to 2ir b not in the z hat direction coming out of the coming out of the screen right we remember recall that the force that a conductor is going to feel or i should say that a charged particle feels is at 90 degrees both to its velocity in this case plus x hat 
uh, well, it's in the x hat direction, and then the direction of the magnetic field, which is in the y hat direction. So that makes qualitative sense. It's in the, the force is in the z hat direction. Okay, now we need to figure out what is the force on the semicircular part, the curved part right here. Well, what is dl along this path? I think you can convince yourself that it's going to be equal to small r times d phi in the phi hat direction. That is dl right there. And um, b still points in the y hat direction. Um, we've got a little bit of a complication here because if you'll notice, um, we've got a, a, a mixture of coordinate systems. This is cylindrical and this is Cartesian. So what we need to do in order to actually take this cross product here with y hat is we need to express the phi hat unit vector in terms of, of x and y coordinates, or at least in terms of x hat and y hat. That's what I've done right here. It turns out that phi hat is equal to minus sine phi x hat plus cosine of phi y hat, just like that. Now that we've uh, express this guy in terms of x hat and y hat. Now we can take these cross products pretty easily. Um, x hat cross y hat is equal to z hat. So this term minus sine phi x hat crossed with b naught y hat contributes this. Um, but note that x hat, oh, sorry, note that y hat cross y hat is zero. So the cosine phi term actually drops out. And the only thing we have to do is integrate sine phi from uh, zero to, to pi. Um, and a derivative of sine phi is gonna be minus cosine of phi. And then we're gonna integrate that from zero to pi. That's gonna get us, um, so we're gonna have a factor of negative one times negative one, that's positive one. But then when you evaluate this guy, um, cosine, of negative, cosine of pi is negative one. So, um, you're going to get a factor of minus two that pops out front. And if you'll notice, the force on the curved section here is equal to minus two i r b naught z hat. So what's the total force on the semicircular conductor? Well, it's F1 plus F2, but if you'll notice, F1 is just equal to the negative of F2. So the total force on the semicircular conductor is equal to zero in this case. Another fundamental and uh, very important concept is that of magnetic torque, okay? Um, the torque T on the loop is the vector product of the moment arm R and the force F, just, just like this, it's given by this equation, capital T, is equal to little r cross f, okay? Um, if you'll notice here, uh, the loop in question is has its axis aligned with the z-axis just like this, its rotational axis in other words, aligned with, with the z-axis. And then the magnetic field is uh, pointing along here in this direction. We would like to know what is the torque felt by on this uh, by this loop due to this magnetic field B? Well, let's see if we can we can break this down. Um, I think that you can you can convince yourself that because of of this this uh, cross product here, this moment arm here extends from the axis rotation out to um, where, whatever body is doing the rotating. So um, if, we're, if we're here on, uh, on, on this line segment, say, um, the, uh, the moment arm R is pointing essentially in, this, in the same direction as, um, it is pointing in the same direction as the, uh, the, uh, um, as, as a vector along this arm. So when you take the cross product, they're equal to zero because they're, they're parallel. Same thing with, with this arm of the, uh, of the loop. When you take the cross product with the moment arm, uh, of the moment arm with um, uh, the, 
vector along this direction, they're parallel, so they, they cross to zero. So the only non uh, the only non-zero uh, contributions to the torque are going to be due to the force felt by this side and by this side. Okay. So the question is, um, what is the force felt by um, this side of the loop due to the magnetic field, and then what is the force due to this side of the loop due to the magnetic field on uh, felt by this side of the loop? due to the magnetic field, all right? Okay, well, how are we gonna figure out first off what the force is um, due to the magnetic field along this arm? It, we're basically going to use uh, this same equation right here again. We're just gonna, we've got a, a line current again that, that's being carried by the wire, and so we need to use this equation. Okay, so what's what's F1? Let's call let's consider this the force on this section, the upward directed force to be equal to F1. All right. Um, when you integrate um, the uh, the current there, the force the force there, um, I think I'm missing a factor of I here. There should actually you also need a, a factor of I in there. But when you integrate um, uh, I DL uh, cross B from this point to this point, you just get the total length L times the current I times the magnitude of the magnetic field B, and that's pointing in this case in the minus x hat direction, right? That's equal and opposite to the force felt by the um, on the on the opposite side of of the loop. So. One side is being pulled up, the other side is being is being pulled down. All right. Next, we need an expression for the moment arm R, R1, and, and that points again from from the axis of rotation to uh, the body that's rotating. In this case, this this line. And uh, the the expression for that uh, moment arm R1 is equal to W over two half the width. That's that distance there times minus cosine of alpha, which is the angle that the normal is uh, to the loop is making with the magnetic field there. Minus cosine alpha in the x hat dire direction, minus sine of alpha in the y hat direction. And then in order to figure out the torque, you take R1 cross F1, um, uh, and you add it to R2 cross F2. When you add those two terms up, you get the total torque here which is minus I W L B sine alpha in the Z hat direction. Okay, so it's in the minus Z hat direction. That makes sense because the torque obeys the right hand rule, which is to say that if you put your fingers in the direction of rotation, then your thumb is gonna point in the, in the direction of the, of the torque vector. So the, the loop is rotating um, in such a way that um, when I put my fingers in the direction of the of rotation, my thumb points in the minus z direction, and that is indeed the direction uh, that the torque uh, is pointing. If the loop has more than one turn, if in other words, instead of just a single loop, um, you have n turns in the loop, then the total torque just gets multiplied by a factor of n here. So you have n i s b sine alpha, where um, s there is the area of the loop. Okay. Um, the quantity NIA, N times A, I times A, um, where here A is the area, is called the magnetic moment M of, of the loop. So a little m is equal to a surface unit normal vector N hat times NIA, where, where again A is the, is the area of the loop, or um, N hat times small m, where M is equal to NIA. Okay. <sighs> Then you can write the torque on the loop in terms of the uh, magnetic moment M, or torque is equal to M cross B. Pretty similar here to our original equation, torque is equal to R cross F. It's, it's very, very close. Um, but the torque uh, due to, on the loop is due to, is e given by um, the magnetic moment crossed with the magnetic flux density. 
Okay, that's it for this lecture. Uh, thank you for your attention, and I will see you in lecture number 16.